Live from Los Angeles, welcome back to Good Morning Lala. And I'm so excited to welcome Colin Egglesfield to the show. He is the agile artist with life lessons from Hollywood. I don't know how you figure it out. How did that <laughs> yeah. did, but thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you guys. Excited to have you. Yeah. yeah. So what was the inspiration for this book? Uh, so, you know, I've been working in Hollywood for the past 20 years. Never thought that this would be something that I'd be doing. Um, I've always been creative and felt like I wanted to do some of the, kind of something different. I actually studied biology pre-med, was planning on going to medical school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I randomly heard on the radio about this model talent search thing. So I went to that three months later. I was walking down runway shows in Milan, Italy. And I think you've done some modeling. Yeah, too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of started, um, my world started to open up when I, realize that when you just step into get out of your comfort zone comfort zone take risks uh it just different op uh worlds can open up and different opportunities and i just kind of kept walking through these doors ended up in new york city and growing up i just kind of felt like i never really truly found what really mattered to me or like what i was passionate about i was going along the the whole medical school route but it never really felt like this was what i really wanted to do and i've met a lot of people who are kind of in that same situation where they're trying to figure out life or they're in a different place in their life, whether it's like getting a divorce or they're changing jobs. And for me, learning as an actor, all these amazing skills um, on how to deal with uh, change and how to uh, really fully get in touch with who you are mm -hmm. uh, to manifest whatever it is that you want to have in life. So the reason why I wrote Agile Artist was because I feel like there's a lot of principles and things that I wanted to share with the world, um, especially after living through the World Trade Center experience and overcoming cancer twice. Wow. There's a lot of things that I learned through those life altering events that I felt like could benefit a lot of people who are going through the same thing. Wow. So of course you can't summarize the whole book and we won't with that right. anyway, but <laughs> that's why people can buy it. But I'd love to hear sort of some of the life lessons that you've sort of learned along the way. I mean, Cancer Twice is incredibly yeah. successful mm -hmm. career as a model, as an actor. Mm -hmm. What have you learned along the way that's been most helpful? So the first thing that I recognized was I was living across the street from the World Trade Center when all of that happened. So mm -hmm. when I woke up that morning and I went to my window and I saw the buildings on fire, the thing that changed my life forever was seeing the people trapped up above the flames. And then I started to see some of the people leaping out of the windows. Oh Horrendous. But in that moment, it made me realize that, you know what, life is short. And I guarantee you, if those people had a second chance at life, they would have done anything that really mattered to them. And it made me realize I'd been studying acting up to, for about three years up until that point. And it wasn't something that I was really sure about. I mean, I was, I grew up skinny and insecure and I never really felt like, you know, I was like the, the man or anything. So the idea of going out to Hollywood and being like, you know, Tom Cruise, and it just was like so incomprehensible to me that I was just like, I, I don't know, maybe I could do this. But once that, once that incident happened with the World Trade Center, it made me realize, you know what, life is short. If you really care about something, because it was something that I, I fell in love with, you know what, go do it. Right. And, it's and, a perfect example of what we were talking about yeah. earlier, how, you know, life's not always great, the things that happen, but it right. always is there to, you know, disasters happen, things like, you know, 9-11 happens, and it shifts our values. It gives yeah. us even the hardest things sometimes can be great blessings even for our country in some bizarre, twisted way. Exactly. So, and so in Agile Largest, I talk about how to reframe a context mm -hmm. to make it more empowering instead of disempowering. Love that. Because I'm sure, like, as you guys always talk about, um, it's about creating that empowering context because those negative thoughts in our head will always try to, you know, keep us so safe when do you think we should do in our comfort zone. Like the yeah. art of allowing versus taking action like we talked earlier. You know, like when do you just allow and know it's all working out for my highest good versus like this emotion is telling me I need to take action. So like you were saying earlier, emotions are good. And as actors, especially as men, a man growing up in the Midwest, I never felt like I, it was safe to express my, my it's true like emotion. anger yeah. is the only okay emotion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It wasn't true. until I got mm -hmm. into acting class that I felt like I had the permission mm -hmm. to really tap into my emotions and let them, let them out. Uh, so I encourage everyone to 
go into an acting class, take an improv class. Because oh, really? a lot of people I meet, you know, they're so they're so heady and so analytical. And they're like, hello, I'm Steve Johnson, and nice to meet you. And, you know, <laughs> and then you look at a clip of Marlon Brando from Streetcar Named Desire, and he's just like, he's so connected to his like his gut and his heart. And I talk about in our agile artist, when your mind, body, and spirit are all connected then that's when the magic happens. Mm. What does that magic feel like? Oh my God, it's amazing. You put the movies with Kate Hudson and Sylvester Stallone. You know, I, just, I just was on set with Sylvester yeah. Stallone um, last year. Uh, a movie I did with him called Backtrace just came out. And literally, like when I was eight years old and I saw Rocky, after I came back from seeing the movie, I literally jumped out of my car and I ran around my block because I was like so inspired. And then like 30 years later, to be on set with my boyhood idol, I was like, you know what? Wow. This can happen, and it's and people are like, well, it, it happened to you, but it can never happen to me. Well, then you know what? If that's the way you think, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. Wow, and so it Just is. Mm -hmm. So inspiring. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the most important, significant decision you've or commitment you've made in your life? Is it the commitment to act? Is it the commitment to never give up? Never give up. Mm. Never give up. If what you truly love lights you up, so I've done the statistics. Um, I've gone on, on about 2,000 auditions in my 20-year acting career. If you go on my IMDb page, I have about 43 credits. That's a 2% success rate. Mm -hmm. Thank okay? you. So that's like 98% <laughs> rejection. Yeah. So yes. people say, like, wow. how can you like keep going if you've been rejected and heard no so many times? And it's because I just wake up in the morning, I love what I do. Mm. I don't look at it as, as rejection. I don't take it personally. Of course. When you go through the sixth audition and it's down between you and the final guy and you're in the Warner Brother, Brothers lot and you're like, oh man, this is exciting. And you it's see so the contract, and you're, you know, you're signing the contracts for, you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna make this amount of money. And then you do the audition, you act your heart out, you go, you leave two hours later, your manager calls you up and you're like, Ugh. and you're like, ah, you know, of course it stings, <laughs> but I, get up the next morning and do it again. just do it again because <laughs> I, I have to. I, I just have yes. to. And if you haven't found that in your life, it's going to be very hard for you to keep continuing. And it's not necessarily what, uh, what you're aspiring to, it's what you're willing to sacrifice right. and how much are you willing to endure to get to where you want to go. Well, I'm it's expecting you to get up on the couch right now and gold. jump. <laughs> it feels a little bit like that right now. <laughs> what are you most excited about right now? Uh, my book. Yes. Like, I really, truly am excited about having written this. Um, Agile Artist is something that I never really thought I'd be writing a book. Uh, but once I, and this is one of those things where I recently moved back to Chicago. I wasn't happy here in Los Angeles. And I kind of felt like I was starting to go into my auditions with that negative, jaded attitude. So I felt like I just needed to push the reset button. I'm not giving up on acting. I just felt like, you know what, you know, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over yeah. and over again and trying to expect the same results. I felt like I needed to remove myself from my environment to get back to my roots. So I moved back to Chicago and mind, body and spirit. I moved back there and I was like, ah, oh, I feel like I'm back home. I booked a movie the second week I was mm -hmm. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I did two episodes of Chicago That's Fire. Yes. I just wow. did yeah. uh, a TV pilot. Um, I, I randomly was speaking at this entrepreneurial event because I also rehab houses in the south side yeah. of Chicago. And um, by the way, 10% of the proceeds of Agile Artists go towards right. creating an, a community art center in the south side. Oh, that's um, great. But this woman randomly came up to me and said, have you ever written a book? And I, I mean, she just- Came to you? Know, you? like what you were trying to yes. in, mm -hmm. in that place where you're connected. But I think, you, I think you make yeah. a great point and you answered, in my opinion, how the difference between when to have the art of allowing versus taking inspired action. Sometimes you got to go to the art of allowing to just get in that feeling that's allowing, yes. you know, the things sometimes we're blocking it just because we're not in, right. in that good vibe, you right. know. So where can people find your book? How can they find you? You're so you amazing. Can, uh, just came out on Saturday. It's on Amazon.com. And uh, I'm super excited. There's a lot of everything in there for everyone. And uh, I'm excited to, so awesome. to hear what people say about it. Congratulations. So inspiring. Brother. So inspiring. Amazing. Thank Stay you. tuned. We'll be right back.